Heidi here from Rain Country Homestead. God is good all the time. And today I'm going to try something a little different with my meatloaf recipe and I'm going to give it more of an Italian flair. Now I've done something like this before but not the way I'm going to do it today. I usually like to take my meatloafs and I have one way I I do it that's just kind of a standard basic way and then I have the way I make it to give it a more Mexican flair and then as I said today's going to be a more Italian flair with an added bonus. So let's get started and I'll show you what I'm going to do today and this is the first time I'm trying it this way so hopefully it'll turn out good. Alright so I'm starting with one pound of grass fed ground beef locally raised by people that we know and so that's you know just kind of a bonus. Okay, so I got that in there, and then I always like to add an egg, and right now I have been, I should be able to get some eggs from a friend of mine real soon now that people are starting to see egg production again, but these are the best ones I can find at the local store, and they're pretty good, but they're still not as good as the local, you know, farm raised ones. Okay, and though I do get my hands into this. I like to always start with my fork to kind of really just first start mixing stuff in here. Alright, so I'm trying to get better at my cam camera angles, people. I just don't always... I am the kind of person, as you know, I just turn the camera on and start rolling. I'm not like Mr. Rain that's good at changing the camera angles all the time. Working on it. So I'm going to be adding some dehydrated mushroom, or not mushroom, onion get quite a bit of that in there and definitely garlic because this is Italian people you got to have garlic in there and I'm talking lots of granulated garlic let's put even more than that so I'm talking at least two tablespoons of each of those now I also have some home canned tomatoes these are from 2014 and I'm gonna smell them like I always do okay smell good and I'm going to put just a little bit in there. I don't want to get too much because I don't want the um, I don't want my meatloaf to be falling apart on me either. And then what I'm going to do with the rest of this is I'm going to make an Italian sauce. And you can find the a video on how I make my own Italian sauce up there. Even though it's just one of the ways I make it, it's, everything changes just a little bit all the time. So I'm going to put in about a tablespoon of red pepper, about that much again of basil, get all my good Italian herbs in here, oregano, about a tablespoon. Now remember, if you've been following me at all, you'll know that we like things with a lot of flavor, so I go heavy on my spices and herbs. This is lavender leaves. I'll be using both the lavender leaves and the rosemary. So I'm using about a tablespoon of each of these herbs in here. Maybe a little bit, a little bit less on the rosemary because it is strong flavored. And then this is my, and I'll be using a couple tablespoons of that, is my um, mixed greens blend. And as I always say, find a video to that right up there if I remember. Or even in the end cards, I'm trying to get better at using end cards. Um, yeah, so eh, let's put about a little better than a teaspoon, maybe a teaspoon and a half of salt. And I already got the garlic and the onion. Okay, now, one of the other things I like to use for binding is oats. And if, I don't know which video will go up first, but I have a video, because I make a bank. I like to get several videos done in a week, so on days I don't have a lot of time for filming and editing. I've got some backup plans, um, but I do have a video up on meat uh, meatballs, and you'll see, you watch these together, and if I already have that up, I'll go ahead and try to link it up here, or in the end card, or both, and you'll see that I do it very, very similar, because they pretty much are the same thing. So what I like to add when I'm doing this kind of stuff is... Instead of breadcrumbs or something like that, I like to add oats. It's whole oats. I do this with my hamburger patties as well. And people love it. It's funny, you know. And it, I don't know, maybe it's just uh, that idea they know something a little healthier is going in there. Okay, so basically that's all I have right there for... I feel like I've left something out. 
Meatloaf is so super easy to make. And then the other thing that's just really wonderful about meatloaf is that you can make it taste however you want. I like to use a lot of dehydrated stuff in my meatloaf because it helps ho uh, soak up any excess moisture. So, you know, you can think of any dehydrated stuff. I kind of consider throwing in some of my dehydrated jalapenos in this. But since I'm not going with the more Mexican flair of this, I'm sticking to Italian, I'm going to leave it as is. Now, let me smell it and see if it needs more garlic. I'm thinking more garlic. It seems like you can never have quite enough. Probably should add some, some of my fermented garlic in here, too, but... Well, just do. We'll just stick with the granulated garlic. Okay. So, what I'll be doing is putting it. Yeah, I just got this pan washed up. You see me use these pans a lot. This came with my Solivore oven. You can find a link to the Solivore oven below. And so, all I'm going to do. Actually, let me take my hands and get in there and really squish it in there good. Make sure everything is mixed well. I don't like to get to this part until after I've got, I know I've got all my herbs and everything added because then otherwise I have to wash my hands like 50 times. Okay, and then I just put it in this pan. Now you can use a bread pan. A bread pan is an excellent idea. A lot of people will do it, do it like that. I'll still make it, sometimes I'll make it round, but I do try to stick with more of a loaf design. All right, so one of the options I like to do with my meatloaf when I have it like this, if I'm just doing a basic um, American style meatloaf, then I like to take this pan and, and put um, some cut up potatoes and carrots or whatever, zucchini, you know, depending on what time of the year it is, and just let that bake in there with the meatloaf. Um, I do this on my wood stove, which is what I'm going to do today. And then in the solar oven, it just it works great. Just to do that, stick it in there and just forget about it. And uh, so what I'm going to do this time, though, since I'm going to make the sauce separately, I'm going to let this bake for a little bit first, just as is. I'm not going to add any vegetables in there because I'm going to be serving it today with spaghetti squash. And I'm going to make my Italian sauce. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put this, put the Italian sauce over the top of this. And then we could also put it on the spaghetti squash, squash if we want. So, um, and I will show you that later when we get to that. And again, you can find my, my Italian sauce recipe in a video link um, at the end of this video or up above in the card. Okay, and again, this is why I like these enamelware pans is because I can just put the lid on it. I don't have to waste aluminum foil and it, it keeps things from drying out and all that and I'll just bake it like that on the wood stove or in the solar oven if this was a nice sunny day that's where it would go. Okay so um, I'll be back when I'm ready to put the sauce on this or maybe I'll just show you what it looks like at the end. We'll see. Okay so there you have it and I'll be back after a bit. My meatloaf is cooked all the way through now and it's nice and brown on the bottom. And I'm just going to go ahead and put the spaghetti sauce or the Italian sauce that I made on top of it. And I want to show you what I did here. So here is what, this pan is cooled off now. Here's what my meatloaf looks like. Nothing fancy, just meatloaf. And if I had been thinking earlier, I would have added olives into the meatloaf. I usually do stuff like that and I forgot this time. But I did remember to add them to my Italian sauce. And of course I didn't put any meat in this Italian sauce because it's going over the top of the um, meat loaf. So I don't need any more meat in there. So I'm just going to put that on there. And again, this is the first time I've done it this way. I just think it's going to be really good. And you know what I thought would be, I just had a thought we might, might be really good in here too, is zucchini. I wish it was that time of year I had fresh zucchini to add to this. I do have freeze dried zucchini. So what I'm going to do... So that's what that looks like. Okay, so what I'm going to do, i got the lid on. I'm, I'm ready to stick it back on the wood stove, but I'm going to wait because it's still very early. I like to get my dinner made early in the day and ready to go. And then when it gets close to time for Mr. Rain to get home, then I'll just stick this on the wood stove and let it heat through. And I'll also be baking my spaghetti squash on there at the same time. And then I, we can take the extra... Uh, Italian sauce I made and serve it over the spaghetti squash like you'll see in my grain-free spaghetti video right up here 
or we can just eat it with um, butter, salt, and pepper. Whatever sounds good. We've we've got options. We're trying to stay away from um, a lot of grains, and so I'm not going to be serving this with bread or noodles tonight. It's just we're just going to have it with the squash and the and the meatloaf and. And that's that's a lot of veggies right there considering the sauce and then the squash too so that's what we're trying to focus on for our meals anyway uh, thanks for watching take care and God bless